All right, in this video, I am gonna show you how to debug a common four by AA battery pack using a multimeter. And this is something that I covered in lecture doing a live demonstration on a document cam so it doesn't really come through in the written notes. And it's a really important skill to learn. So you use these battery packs to power, whether it's just a little circuit with some LEDs on a breadboard or a mobile robot. And many times your circuit doesn't work for some reason. There are a variety of different reasons that a circuit might not work as expected. But one of the very first things you should check is, does my circuit have power? Because if it doesn't have power, then it's not going to work as expected. And the simplest and most immediate thing to check with one of these battery packs is, okay, well, is it on? Make sure some of these don't have switches. They're just hardwired and they will always be on when the batteries are in. Some do have this little off on switch, so that's just a silly little mistake. Okay, it wasn't on, turn it on and you're good. But say that it's on and your battery or your circuit still doesn't appear to be working properly. How can you then use a multimeter to figure out if the issue is your batteries or the battery pack itself or something else in your circuit? So I'm gonna try and go through and do this in a single continuous take for the sake of minimal editing here. So pardon me if I pause or something or pause to catch my breath because I'm talking too fast. First thing we're gonna do is turn our multimeter on to the voltage, DC voltage measurement range and set it to 20 volts. So I have a separate video that's all about how to use a multimeter, what all these different dial settings mean and everything. So we're not really gonna go over all that. In this video, we're just gonna jump right to the 20 volt DC setting because that range is high enough to measure roughly the six volts we would expect to get out of a battery pack like this. And if your battery pack is working properly, you should be able to take your two multimeter probes, make sure you have them plugged into the right ports, so COM and for measuring voltage. Again, we talk about more, of that, more about that in another video. Should be able to, to connect, connect these to the exposed metal bits at the end of the battery pack leads. And for fresh AA batteries, should get a little over six volts for slightly older AA batteries. Right, kind of hard for me to do this and keep it all in frame here. The batteries I'm using are a little older. I'm getting a little under six, maybe 5.8 volts for these slightly used batteries. So if you get that voltage, then your battery pack's working and you're good. Um, that's a separate question as to whether the batteries are too old to work. So we have a different video somewhere about um, battery internal resistance and how a battery does not drop all the way to zero volts when it is dead. A dead battery will still read some voltage. So again, that's kind of a topic for a different video. The question we really wanna address in this video is, okay, what happens if you do that and you get zero? You hook it up and you are just getting zero volts on your screen. So your circuit is not even getting power because you're not getting voltage out of your battery pack. How can you figure out what's going wrong internally? So pop the cover off. And if we look at what is going on Physically, inside of one of these, we have four batteries connected in series. So they are connected end-to-end. -end. If I pop two of these batteries out, we'll see there is a little metal plate on this end here. See, that was connecting the positive end of one battery over to the negative end of the next battery, which has this spring that pushes on the negative end, which pushes the positive end of that one up into a plate here, which is connected over there and so on. So I've got four batteries in series, which are then in series with a switch, which is in series with one of these two wires here. Point being, I have an entire series circuit. And if at any point in that series circuit, just one connection is broken, then since it's in series, that breaks the whole circuit and the voltage is gonna read zero. And with a brand new battery pack, Everything should be okay, but if, for example, you're a student taking a laboratory electronics course at a university and you have battery packs that have been reused and abused by previous generations of students for years, there are various things in here that can actually sort of mechanically fail and result in not getting any voltage out of the battery pack. So the number one thing I have seen that is usually the first to go is the switch. So these get toggled a lot, they get pushed on. You can see how this one is sort of recessed into the surface there, I think from people pushing down on it over the years. Normally when you buy these new, that switch might pop up a little more. So if the switch goes or is starting to go, that can many times be, um, the symptom you will see is intermittent power. Like it works one minute and doesn't work the next. And that's because the switch has not failed completely yet. 
It just kind of happens to be that sometimes you can get it in exactly the right position where you pushed on it just the right way and it is making contact and you still have a closed circuit and then, oops, you bumped it or you dropped it or you positioned it funny and now the contacts and the switch are open and you're not getting a voltage anymore. So we can't actually really see the switch. There's this additional little plastic cover here that I could pry off with a screwdriver if I wanted, but if I pry that off, we would see the actual contacts on the switch in there. So next potential failure point, these metal plates are pretty sturdy. You know, that's just kind of a solid hunk of metal in there that is unlikely to fail, but this is a good point to bring up the continuity check feature on the multimeter. So go down here to this symbol here. And if I touch my two probes together, I should get a beep depending on the meter. Sometimes you'll get a reading on the screen. So the lower, the better. That means it's very low resistance. You'll get an audible, audible beep. Some multimeters have a light that'll light up. So if you connect that when it's in continuity test mode to any two points in here that should be connected, for example, this plate to this plate, I will also get a beep. Okay, so I know there's a good. I'm not gonna get a beep if I go from here to here because there's no, and don't do this across a live battery, but for example, if I used a jumper wire to bridge from here to there, then I would expect continuity. So that's only gonna tell you if you have continuity between two points and nothing's broken. So the, again, the solid metal plates are kind of unlikely to fail, but these wires, for example, these get tugged on over the years. That connection there can become loose or if somebody kinks the wire too hard, it could actually become frayed internally. And again, you can have an inter intermittent connection. So it's a little easier to figure this out if you um, pop this part of the cover off and trace which wire is connected to which plate, but you can test from the ends of the wires and I should get continuity to one of the plates in here. So that actually I got lucky. The first one I tested there. So that tells me that my black wire is good. Again, if I popped off this plastic cover here, I would see that the black wire is soldered to this plate. And I believe the red one should be connected to this one here. Yep, so I'm getting continuity there. That tells me that my red wire is good. So, and one of those, again, I can't tell which um, is also gonna be in series with the switch, but that's telling me that my switch and both wires are good. If you do that and you don't get continuity, that's telling you that one of your wires is bad. The other thing, I have seen start to fail here is actually the springs, where the springs had been compressed so much for so long that they had sort of lost some of their springiness and weren't extending to their full length. And therefore the little positive tip of the battery wasn't being pushed against the plate on the other side enough, not making good, so if there's just a tiny little air gap there, you have an open circuit and you're not gonna get voltage out of the pack. These springs and the contacts can also be corroded or oxidized if there was a battery that was left in there for a long time. And you might see this white or sort of greenish, fuzzy mineral looking stuff develop on the battery terminals that can then also then get onto these contacts. So even if you put in fresh batteries, if you have that, I don't know if it's oxide, I'm a mechanical engineer, not a chemist. So I have no idea what that stuff is, but whatever it is, it's not conductive. So if it gets accumulated on um, the terminals here, again, you have an open circuit, no contact. Let me think, that is probably not an exhaustive list, but a fairly comprehensive one of things that can physically go wrong with the battery pack. Um, the other thing to consider is user error in putting the batteries in. So you'll see these are labeled with polarity. You put them in in series properly, kind of head to tail or positive to negative, then these voltages are going to add up to give you roughly six volts total at the output. But say I screw that up and put just one of them in backwards, right? So that one's in backwards. Turn this on, switch back to my voltage measurement mode and look at my output now. Again, sorry, it's kind of hard to deal with the camera and keep this all on screen when I do this. See, now I am not getting anything out. So the Batteries are not happy about having something backwards like that, even though I have it on. Mathematically, if, oh, actually, sorry, that is because the negative end here doesn't have that little tip that sticks out, right? So there's just no contact there and I'm getting zero. Mathematically, if you have still three of these in series with proper polarity 
and then you subtract off one, you would expect to get about 4.5 volts as opposed to 6 volts, or if I inverted two of them, then they're all going to cancel out and I would get zero volts out, but in this case, again, it doesn't matter because I'm actually not making contact there and I have an open circuit. There was one more thing I wanted to mention. I am forgetting what it is, but I'm trying to do this in a single continuous take. So give me a second to pause and think about it. Aha, I remembered. So I am going to have to edit two clips together here. The thing I forgot to mention doing is taking out and testing the individual batteries. So if you have the whole pack together and you're getting zero volts and you cannot isolate or figure out what the issue is inside, you can also always pop your batteries out and test them individually. So that does help you tell that, again, your individual batteries are good. Um, even a dead battery is not going to read completely zero volts. Out of curiosity, I'm not sure what I'll get if I try to measure this really corroded one here. Okay, so I guess maybe if you have something that is totally dead or corroded or you have so much of that oxide type stuff. So even there, once I punch through the um, oxide or again, whatever that is layer on the one side, I do even get a non-zero voltage out of this super corroded one. So you're probably never gonna actually read zero, zero on an individual battery. But again, if you have them all in the pack and you're reading zero on the whole pack, that does help you confirm that the individual batteries are still good and then there's something wrong with the battery pack. If you put them all in there, assuming you put them incorrectly and didn't get some backwards and you're getting zero on the whole pack. All right, that is it for real this time. Thanks for watching.